So uh, what I just wanted to share was uh, my experience um, on both sides. I've had bosses or leaders who never wanted to listen to your opinion or who were very, very picky, you know. And so sometimes the tendency for me just to shut down on whatever they say, you know, that was always there. But I also learned that there were things I could learn from them, irrespective of how they led. So my encouragement basically is that sometimes we wonder why we have certain bosses that why are we under this kind of boss who doesn't listen, who doesn't want to hear your opinions. And they have had very very good bosses at the same time too. But I know that in every situation, there are things that God always wants us to just learn, you know, for the next um, stage of assignment he wants us to do, or, you know, the next group he wants us to lead or something later in the future that will be very useful to us. And I think again, Another reason why the Lord, you know, brings us before these kinds of people who might seem to be bad bosses or bad leaders. Uh, it's just for us again to see a picture of what we should not be. So I, yeah. I believe every case is a learning season. And um, yeah. another thing again is when it comes to the church, I, I realize that if we, if we, if we as leaders, you know, lead the way the world leads, we will completely miss God's plan or God's um, intentions or whatever God wants to do through our leadership. So uh, it's paramount that as Christian leaders that uh, we're in touch with the spirit of God and that our leadership is spirit led, you know, such that we are fulfilling, not just we're not, we're fulfilling what God wants to do, you know, in that season for the group of people, the Lord has brought us to lead in the church could be small groups, could be the whole church or any ministry, whatever God has you know, called whoever God has called us to lead. You know, it's important that it's spirit led. And then uh, the 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 five levels of leadership you referenced by John Maxwell. I, I'm actually even reading the the book. I had to buy the book last year. Um, okay. I I had seen I seen um a talk on it on on um, on YouTube years ago. So I decided to buy it yes last year. Um, and it's very. I I just want to encourage everybody to to get, get get that book or just find a way of reading because it's very, very helpful. But for me, I, when I look at all those five levels, I see how Jesus even, you know, Jesus' leadership played out throughout this time on earth, you know. Yeah. I, I mean, till now, everybody still reckons with him. He's the greatest leader of all. So it's a very good material. It's a good piece for everyone to read. And just one last thing. I noticed that the fifth level, you put personhood, I thought it was pinnacle because I think that's what I saw. Or maybe I haven't got to that part where it says personhood. Mm. Well, I know it says pinnacle. That, that's what I just wanted oh, to identify. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Personhood of the, the, the right at the top, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah. Sir. Thank you. Yeah. That is so good. Yeah. So thank you. Um, Oh. Can you just give me a minute? I There's someone at the door. I'm so sorry that I just need, I, I just, just give me a minute, please. No problem, Pastor. Um, really sorry. Uh, apologize for the boss. Um, sorry about that. Right. Thank you, Say, for um, for that input. And 
Yeah. Anyone else uh, you want to share about um, your experiences with leadership? Um, I think the 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 thing is uh, we we face both the good and the bad uh, when it comes to leadership and leadership styles. And 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 the challenge for us is to um, you know continue walking in the good and not to uh, like say we we're talking about you know how to be led by the spirit. Like we have enough and more, and uh, and not to be tainted by. Um, any other, um, you know, leadership or, or a worldly or a fleshly, um, you know, uh, leadership thing, which contradicts with the word. I think that I just want to, you know, uh, uh, reference that or say that because, um, you know, uh, well, the world might be doing or carrying out the leadership style or, uh, you know, something about or leading people, uh, which might be very in, in tune with the word of God. Right. Uh, so for us to, you know, we need to, uh, you know, make that difference, you know, that it's that it, when something contradicts the word of God, you know, it's not to say that and paint everything right, you know, everything that is happening, um, you know, in an organization or, you know, so, someone who's leading is, is not leading. Uh, we, we, we can't say that it, okay, it's, it's, it's bad leadership style or, you know, because many things are in line. We notice that many things are in line with uh, the principle of God's word. You know, uh, um, many organizations do that. They are very, uh, uh, you know, people-centered. They they do things to, you know, they recognize uh, you know, organizations today recognize people as, a, you know, as a, as an asset, as a resource, and uh, and do that. So uh, we can't paint everything, you know, uh, and say. Well, this is this is how it is. If it's if it's of the world, then it's you know if it's in the world in an in a corporate thing, uh, then it's bad. You know we can't do that. But, but definitely, when it's using our discernment, when it's when it contradicts the word of God, um, yeah, you know we. Uh, so that's a challenge, you know, for us to be in an environment. Let's say you're working in an organization for let's say five years, six years, and uh, and you're you know, you're being led in a very different way. Uh, you have someone who's overseeing you, who's, uh, you know, has got very different ways of uh, working. Maybe it's manipulative, maybe it's um, authoritative and, you know, that kind of a thing. And and for whatever reason, you're in that environment for about five, six years. You know, the, the thing is, um, like Samuel, the way he grew up, he saw many things happening uh, in, in the temple, but... Um, but he chose to, you know, he uh, in, in the you know he, he chose to uh, hold on to his integrity. You know, he grew up uh, listening and uh, being sensitive to the voice uh, of God. Uh, you know, um, so uh, and that's what Scripture says. He grew, uh, and even though he wasn't that kind of an environment, I think that's the challenge for us. And um, you know, if if we make that shift and say, okay, this this is the environment that I'm in. You know, I'm working here. I'm, you know, it it is difficult. It is tough. It's like the courts of Nebuchadnezzar, uh, or like the courts of Pharaoh. But you know, I know that I'm here for a reason. I know that I'm I'm an influencer. I know that I'm you know being salt and light, and I'll continue to you know, lead the way God wants me to lead. Uh, I think that's a, that's a great thing. You know, that'll be so impactful. Um, I mean, you know, some of us have uh, worked in organizations like, like Chris and uh, uh, who else, Sri Kumar, um, Tarun. Um, maybe you could share your experience. I think that will be good. Maybe Rupa. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, others, you also, um, maybe Beth and um, others, you know, you, you could just share. I think that will be helpful for the class, you know, if you could share your experience. Um, I think that will be useful. Yeah, would anyone like to share? Um, yeah, go ahead. Anyone? Uh, this is with the uh, respect to leadership style, uh, Pastor. Yeah, leadership style. Um, you know your experience with leadership, uh, being led. 
you know, uh, maybe you were in an organization, you had, you know, whatever, whatever good leaders, bad leaders, people who inspired you, you know, just to share some of those stories, uh, I think it will be helpful for us. Yeah, yeah so I think, um, uh, you know, I mean, I have, uh, you know, worked with uh, um, a number of, you know, different type of leaders, uh, uh, some of them who have, um, uh, you know, um, you know, made a difference. Some of them, uh, you know, have mm. have been very, uh, you know, autocratic uh, in in their approach. Mm. Um, but one one, I think one type of leader leader that I would like to just talk about is uh, this was with a with a. I mean, this was when I was working for a large um, uh, multinational um, uh, when I worked abroad, mm. where um, there were, they were. It was not just one uh, one person, but I think it was about uh, three people actually. Who kind of um, uh, who, who held quite senior positions uh, in the organization, and they decided that they would, uh, in a sense, uh, you know, transform the organization, and um, uh, you know, they 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 changed, you know, uh, the organization structure. Um, it was it was it, 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 there was a lot of. Um, uh, you know, self motivation over there because they themselves, um, you know, benefited a lot. Uh, but I think they also had had the vision to to uh, you know, uh, and as well as the the, the ability to uh, you know to get uh, you know get that organization transformed and uh, make a make a huge difference in the organization. So they were like um, you know they held senior positions. But they still reported to a you know a person who held who, who was the uh, you know the, uh, the Asia Pacific uh, head of the organization, uh-huh. and who had been in that organ who had who had led that organization for for a number of years number of years, and in fact had had actually started off the uh, you know um, the uh, you know the organization. Of, I mean, it's a U.S. company, but they, he actually started off the uh, the uh, the Asia Pacific cooperation, but because he had been there for many years. Uh, he was running it the you know the way he felt uh, you know it was uh, you know that he he wanted to run it and he did he did uh, achieve considerable amount of success uh, but i think what these three individuals were able to do was to actually transform the organization so i think you know in a sense they were they were transformational uh, leaders um and they had that 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 uh, ability to to you know Really flip their organization, you know, on on, a, on another on another side, and um, make a make a huge difference. Right. And um, uh, in a, I mean, they also, as I said, uh, you know, benefited a lot because you know, finally, all the reporting lines actually, you know, went back went to these to, to these individuals, right. you know, led to these individuals. So um, I think it was very very interesting to see how the organi- organization, uh, you know. Changed from you know operating in, in a certain in a certain way for many years, mm-hmm. and then getting transformed, and uh, sometimes you know that makes a big difference because um, we need to be able to transform, you know, from uh, you know from from doing something in a, in, a, in a certain way, and you know making uh, making a, a big difference, uh, you know, changing changing the entire way of, of, of operating and you know making a big right. difference. Yeah. Yeah, right. obviously. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, thank you for that. Yeah, obviously, it's made a big impact because after so many years, you know, you're, uh, that's the first thing that comes to your mind and you're talking about, you know, those leaders. So that's that's good. Yeah. So uh, to make a change and, and it's difficult, you know, you know, in an organization, even with, the, you know, with all the, uh, with the rules and norms and everything, bringing in change, uh, I think there's a whole, you know, area like organizational change, uh, which is a, you know, subject by itself. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, um, it's an art by itself to bring in that. And, and yeah, and, and as, um, uh, you know, as salt and light, we are change agents, right? As leaders, we are. That's how we. Um, the Lord looks at us. You know, go into the world and and be this. You know, be the influence, be the impact, and uh, and praise God for the uh, for the you know spheres of influence that He's placed us in. Right? Yeah. Anyone else? Um, maybe one more person, and then we'll move on. Can I? Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Dishrikma. Thank you, Pastor. Pastor, um, 
in my life um, yeah when i was in the corporate field and uh, also in my spiritual life so the like um, i have i have learned so many things from the leaders even from my pastors now uh, where i am attending the church to so the way how uh, how they are actually interacting with the people the way that how they handle the things that humility and the, the in the grace which they are walking right. and uh, moreover when i was in the corporate field yeah there were so many uh, good and bad managers i faced and uh, um with their mistakes i learned so many things and with their it was an i overall it was an input in my life like i learned a lot of things through their mistakes through their decision making and um, even it is, i still carry those things in my life uh, even in my ministry uh, when i when i, I always uh, i always keep those principles and uh, those things which always helpful for me there are there is there are managers who has invested their knowledge in my life and uh, there are managers who are so harsh that i don't want to go to office at all i said god i don't want this job at all i don't want to quit the job but um, god was so gracious uh, in my life that um, and he wanted me to go through those uh, difficult situations because uh, i was that time i was not knowing that he was actually preparing me uh, for something but uh, yeah their input and uh, yes they are down there i saw the promotions of my managers because of their uh, the way how they 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 carry the knowledge about the 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 process they carry the knowledge about how to handle the businesses so it was it was a great thing that there are some difficult managers which i don't know how to explain but uh, it was a tough time even in my spiritual life also i have a, even through my pastors is yes, even you know even past through pastor ashish also a good leader for me so mm. so many other pastors are there right. yeah that's my uh, brief uh, input right. thank you pastor thanks a lot thank you thank you shikumar thank you i'm just reading out what better shared listening to those underused key uh, even to the point of listening to their personal issues giving dignity even to the lowest in india it's quite difficult as lower paid workers are often um, cast based okay uh, allowing lower caste people to hold positions of responsibility and making sure they are respected yeah especially challenging in rural areas yes uh, very true when you take time to listen and appreciate the staff under you it makes it easier to bring correction and uphold the standards as they feel cared for even when being corrected so true yeah um and I, and i guess uh, you know uh, the thing is everybody is busy in a typical work day uh, and if the organization can bring in you know some kind of a Uh, process in place where where with this maybe an open house uh, maybe once a month where or even a suggestion box uh, and and something that is responded to you know okay we are we, we hear you uh, and well uh, you know and and something like that you know if it's incorporated in the you know i'm talking about when i say organization i'm talking about the ministry also you know however small or big the setup is um, the bigger it is the the i think it's it's more important uh, i mean it's it's critical to have these kind of uh, you know processes in place because you get i mean you get lost in the bigness of things and things can, can tend to become very mechanical very um, uh, what's the word very uh, you know uh, process based and not people think so to bring in that you know to always um uh, you know to to make sure that that emphasis is there you know that's very important um yeah and uh, and so the, the the wisdom is in you know uh, doing it when you know when do you do that and how do you do that most effectively and and how over a period of time it just doesn't become a routine right so uh, even when you have a process in place like this and then you know if it's not being uh, you know, if it just becomes a routine and nothing has been done about it then uh, you know then it's it becomes useless and yeah but i i get what you're saying um, that's about um, you know uh, typically in a country like india and and I, i don't know if there's in other nations also you know based on the you know on the income level on the caste um that you're born from yeah a lot of biases a lot of uh, you know injustice true and uh, i think we as believers can really make a difference uh, in in such i think i i know of a wonderful you know uh, uh, a person who's uh, you know who's a 
he is in in an organization uh definitely the top management but then um you know he's quite a influence quite a you know inspiration like in at his home uh, I, like, I don't know how, again, how, how frequently, but those who serve at home, you know, people, house helps and, um, you know, maids and uh, and the driver, you know, uh, I think once, I forget again, once a month or once in ever so, uh, you know, he, he cooks for them and they sit down and have a meal together, right? And uh, so just to tell them that, hey, you're the same as you, you are. And uh, yeah, our roles are different. And the thing is, I know that, is, uh, you know, but uh, yeah, but this is it, we are equal. So they sit at the table and eat. So I think it's a very powerful message that's going to them, you know, uh, um, like everyone, you know, house elves and driver uh, and so on, who they sit together at the table with the children, with the family and eat uh, together. So uh, yeah, let's have a meal together. It's amazing. So um, something radical, you know, things like that. Uh, would really make a big difference. Uh, I mean, it's a lasting influence, lasting impact. Uh, where, uh, you know, I, I remember a, a story where this person, I think, was. Uh, uh, this is from you know friends of ours who were in uh, in in Gujarat. Uh, a lot of uh, you know the caste thing is there, untouchability and all that. And so, uh, you know, special plates, special cups to drink from, eat from, for those who help, you know, and also they're not allowed beyond uh, uh, this door and so on. So, whereas this person, you know, served the plate that you normally give. And in fact, no plates, you know, it was like, you don't give a plate, you just, you know, they're supposed to bring their whatever leaves or whatever, and then all their own plates and you, you know, give the food. So, um, so here is uh, this person serving food, you know, uh, in a plate and and then giving it and uh, and that that guy just started crying crying saying uh, you know nobody's ever done this and uh, and the fact is that I think she's made uh, I think two eggs <laughs> so you know he's like I've never had two eggs together in one meal you know so that's the um, and he was like crying he was in tears and uh, so that's the kind of you know, reality of the place or the environment that we are in, where we are called to make a difference uh, through our leadership, you know, where, um, and with what we were talking about, you know, compassionate leadership is uh, is exactly that, where we, uh, where we hear uh, out, where we are empathetic to the needs of the people and, um, and then we hear them out and so on. Um, also using wisdom, you know, at the same time, because, um, you know, when, when you empathize, when you hear, it doesn't mean that, um, you know, you are going to oversee a lot of, you know, misbehavior or misdemeanor or, uh, you know, uh, slacking off in work and all that. You know, you need to make that, uh, uh, you know, that communication right. And it's, hey, I'm listening to you. Um, I, yeah, definitely. But this is the standard. Right? This is the expectation. Right? And there's nothing wrong in communicating that. You know, I want the best from you. I want the best for you. Um, so there's a difference in that, you know, and not to make it like a very, you know, like what they say, sloppy agape kind of thing, you know. Um, so that's the thing, yeah. So thanks, thanks, Beth, for sharing that. I know uh, there's a need for radical leadership uh, in our nation, and there are, and and there are many from other, you know, even from other worldviews, you know, other, you know, not necessarily believers who make a big difference. And I, I think there's a lot we can learn from them. Right, um, but you know, we who have the life of God in us, I think we have much to give, right? Uh, and uh, to be, who we are called to be in the place we are called to be, um, you know, uh, as leaders, um, I think we need to raise up. I mean, rise up. Sorry, rise up and be that. Right? Okay, that was good. Thank you for sharing all those stories. Uh, um, so yeah, hopefully again, and just coming back, you know, we need to do this right. And uh, maybe we've had bad examples, but that doesn't mean, you know, leadership is a bad thing, right? Uh, and it's it's a good thing. It's, uh, it's a God thing. And all of us are called, invited to this. They are commissioned for this, right? 
Um, so let's take that place and be equipped um, and grow and take our place, right? Okay. Okay, so let's um, let's move on. Uh, we we'll we'll move on to you know decision making within the organization. Um, again, uh, uh, very interesting and uh, uh, you know one that's very important. Okay, um, that will that really help us. You know, maybe you've started off something and you're planning to start something. You know, when it comes to decision making and um, you know, we're just scratching the surface here. You know, we're not going into the depths of it, but uh, I just want that to keep in. You know, want you to keep that in mind as well. Okay, so um, here uh, we make our standards clear. You know, when it's a organization, when it's a small, I mean, whatever the size of the uh, ministry or the organization, you make the standards clear. Hey, these are the standards. Right. Uh, the, the you know it, right from the it can be from the you know the joint letter it can be the soft guidelines. Uh, you know our the standards, you know, the integrity, uh, excellence, uh, quality. Uh, you know whatever is expected, biblical nature, you know, everything. And uh, very important, just like the vision, this needs to be captured, this needs to be uh, documented and communicated, right? Uh, and reiterated, right? Um, so uh, recently when we had a you know, um, meeting for the first meeting of the year, you know, went through these things, you know, what are, who are we? It's important for us to remind ourselves, you know, collectively, you know, as a church, as a ministry, who are we? Right? This is who we are. This is what we stand for. Right? So that our decision making and the standards are not contradictory. Right? For the most part, you know, that that guides us in our decision making. So we don't make immoral decisions or we don't make decisions that are um you know uh, which are which compromise on the integrity uh, of the organization of the you know uh, so uh, so so that's the thing right from you know everyone uh, having a strong grip you know we could be make we could be doing very varied uh, things right but in all those uh, this would apply right we could be designing, we could be uh, in human resource, we could be accounting, we could be you know, doing other things, you know, preaching, teaching. But the standards uh, need to be the same. You know, it can't be you know, partial for some, uh, you know, for the other. Standards need to be the same, impartial, across board, uh, the same standards. So um, the best way to make it is to communicate it, uh, but this way to maintain it is to you know, uh, communicate it and to reiterate that. Okay, uh, and for this, for it to be clear, you know, there's no ambiguity, no fuzzy fuzziness in language, no lack of clarity, but uh, for it to be, you know, precise, clear, and uh, and communicated. Right. Okay. So have a proper system for approval of decisions. Now, this is also important. Right now, when the um, you know you, you know that when the organization is small, when it's like two three people or maybe four people, you know you you I mean you, as a leader you can make all the decisions. But when the organization grows, and when you have other leaders, then there some of these decisions are made by others. You know you're maybe as a as a senior leader you are making uh, certain decisions for the you know for the uh, for the you know, the direction of the organization, right? The big picture, um, the vision. So you're making those, those macro decisions, but the micro decisions of, uh, okay, paper for the printer and, uh, you know, water for the, uh, you know, the water dispenser and those kind of things you are not making, it, right? Um, so, uh, but, so you've set the guidelines, you've set the standards, but uh, uh, you're not making those decisions. So people don't have to come back to you or uh, you know, badger you for approvals, right? So you're not micromanaging things. So, so what is the what is the solution? The solution is that you have a system in place and a proper pathway for approvals to be given, right? So, if it's uh, if it's buying something, if it's if you need to spend some money, if you need to hire some things, you know, have a system in place, right? Initially, and it it, it needs to list down. And this will keep growing. This will keep changing as the 
as the ministry change, as the ministry grows, right, as the organization grows, this will keep changing. As you, you know, as you see uh, things, uh, people being added on, and uh, you know, your sphere of influence increasing, and so on. So have a uh, system in place, uh, 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 kind of like who needs to make what decisions, right? Uh, let's say you know when it's spending, you know, this is something which uh, which we need to deal with every day, right? Because you're spending on so many things, consumables, uh, you know, uh, so many things that you're using for, you know, in ministry and so on. So uh, decide, okay, uh, when it comes to this X amount, um, so-and-so will make a decision, right? We have this team leader, have an X amount of money, it's fine. You know, let's say 5,000, 10,000. Uh, if it, uh, this person will approve it, Right. We'll, uh, we'll, we've seen this person, we've seen the, you know, what that person carries and knowledge, understanding, etc. So he's well able, capable to make the decision uh, you know, in terms of quality, in terms of vendor check, whatever, all that. But let this person decide. You know, it doesn't come to you. you know? And so, um, so having those things in place, you know, simple uh, process. Um, because if this is not clear, then it, it what happens is, uh, uh, you know, some things happen. You know, decisions will not be made. Like saying, oh, I, I need to do this, but I'm not clear now. I uh, Do I do it? Do I not? You know, the person is still gathering information or waiting for, you know, it could be various reasons, but uh, the important decision so maybe some things are required. Maybe some things need to be done. Some tasks need to be done. Maybe some it could it could be about some product, some service that the um, that the organization needs. Um, you know, some hiring that needs to be done. Now that's not done because they're not unable to make the decision. Okay, who has to make the decision? Uh, there's lack of clarity, right? So if there's clarity, then it will be made and things can go ahead. Right. Um, so then the other thing could be, uh, you know, when when the clarity is not there, then it comes back, you know, to uh, maybe to you, maybe to someone who gets swamped. You know, it's, it's not their place at all. Right, gets swamped with the details. Right. So, um, so if it's you know if things are need to be done promptly and need, uh, um, you know, then there's punctuality. And uh, and there's a consequence if it's not done promptly. You know those kind of decisions um, are there. So, well, having a system in place, a process in place, with with the right approval for each of those decisions. You know who needs to will will really help. Okay. Um, well, while we have these things in place, uh, be open for discussions and inputs. You know, maybe suggestions. Uh, because these will always, um, uh, and also create a culture like, okay, you can give inputs, but it needs to be given in a, you know, honorable way, because people can talk out of frustration, oh, you know, this is, uh, but over a period of time, they will understand, okay, I, you know, this is frustrating, you know, this is, uh, it was not done uh, because of X, Y, Z reasons, but um, let me communicate that in an honorable manner, right? Let me do that in a, uh, in a very objective way. Uh, you know, with a, with a, uh, you know, with a view to solve uh, rather than to put blame or, you know, so, um, so people also will understand, right? Be open for discussions, and inputs. And the thing is this, you know, when suggestions come or when um, inputs are given, it's not that everything can be approved. It's not that everything can be worked out. And so people also need to have that uh, understanding Right. Okay. Uh, this decision, uh, well, it rests with the decision makers. Uh, the suggestions, inputs, you know, there is definitely we can discuss, weigh the pros and cons, um, and then you know take a uh, take a clear decision. And of course, we're talking about some things which are which require you know, these kind of things. You know, with these are major decisions. Uh, these are these are not like you know something to do with uh, what what flavor of tea to order or, you know, uh, what brand of tea to have. You know, it's, these are, you know, big decisions. So obviously, you know, the consequences are there. And so, you know, be open for discussions and inputs and create a culture and whether where you as leader or other leaders are accessible. Okay. Now this will, this will really help because um, this will help uh, to keep the channel of information 
uh, open it will help in uh, it will help the leader in knowing what is the ground reality okay uh, because the leader well need not be always uh, in touch with what is happening on the ground you know it, it's good to do that it, uh, it's important but you know if you know if that information channel if that communication channel is uh, the information flow is not there then one can be alienated one can be distanced uh, and uh, uh, it can it can result in some poor decisions um, it can result because you're assuming okay this is how it is you know there is a certain you know step of faith that needs to be made but when the information is there when that you know reality ground reality is something else and you're you know you need to make a informed decision uh instead of making an informed decision there's the danger of make you know take uh, assuming something right going by assumption um so well so be open uh, keep those channels of information and communication open right okay then um take responsibility for decisions that are made you know that's uh, that's also crucial because uh, you know we might make great decisions and we might also make some poor decisions um, you know as leaders i think the, the best thing is to um recognize that you know if a bad decision is made to say that yes i made that decision and uh, and then and say okay uh, you know no no amount of justification or you know fixing of blame uh, you know to avoid all that right to say okay if it was so the reasons for making the decision and then and say okay let's try to you know move on let's try to change let's try to you know uh, um see what can be done you know it was a bad decision and it was done and these are the consequences you know, how can we um how can we uh, go beyond that right so that's the thing and um, yeah so that that is that is very helpful so when it comes to you know organizations and uh, uh, decision making uh, so these are i mean these are i'm sure there are many other things but these are four uh, very um, important and also uh, some things for us to rem- remember right which will help us um and also when you're talking about culture okay now it's also you know when we're talking about this processes and so on culture is something which is very very um, uh some of these intangibles right um now when we talk about an organization uh well um there could be several things you know about ministries okay this is what they do and because th- these are all uh, on display for us to see um Uh, what they do what the result is and everything it's there on paper you know maybe they are in so many places they're doing this you know they are helping they are, uh, the the projects are there the outcome of those projects are there to to uh, as proof of that but when it comes to culture of uh, you know things like this openness um, and uh, uh, respect and uh, and so on it it can be very intangible right uh, and uh, and the thing is it's based on our core beliefs it's based on our values what we esteem highly and it's based on some of our practices right? what we do daily um, as an organization so uh, our, our core beliefs and values and this forms the culture it um, it is uh, uh, well it is you you step in and you realize okay this is the culture you know um, I, i remember you know uh when i made some changes like when i moved from organization a to organization b uh, when i was working uh, in corporate sales so um so i moved in based on you know what i could see what i uh, what i studied what i heard about them the opportunities that were given uh, and and this was early days right the first job and the second job so then i realized the culture was very very different like the first organization was kind of friendly easy going uh, very you know, but the second organization was uh, uh, with a bit more with bit more rigid uh, you know and uh, uh, aggressive very competitive and so on so um, and you realize that uh, uh, only after you join you know you realize that in the conversation you realize that in the you know briefing meetings and so for an outsider this may not be very apparent but once you step in is when you when you feel the culture when you you know when you uh, realize okay this is what the culture is right so um 
so the thing about culture, it can be positive, it can be negative. Right? It can really help the organization, it can boost the organization, it can keep people together, motivated, inspired, uh, and, uh, you know, or it can do the opposite of it, right? If the culture of, you know, slackness is a culture of, uh, you know, shoddy work um, and so on. Now that can result in frustration, right, uh, with people. And if, if it's, you know, a culture of hypocrisy, you're saying something and you're doing something else, um, uh, and then, you know, that, that can uh, very quickly demotivate people, right? And they're looking for ways to exit the, uh, you know, go somewhere else rather than stay and give their best. And they could be highly skilled, highly qualified, people who could really, you know, bless the organization. Okay. Um, so Paul talks about it, 1 Corinthians 11. He talks about traditions that he delivered then. Uh, Second Thessalonians 2 says, stand fast and hold the traditions uh, which were that you were taught by word or our epistle. Right? And... Um, and, and then it also talks about, uh, you know, uh, withdrawing from every brother who walks, uh, second section and three, uh, from every brother who walks disorderly and not according to the traditions which he received from us. So he talks about these, some of these, uh, you know, things that are not scripture and verse, but then some of these intangibles, you know, like um, customs. Uh, this is the way of doing things, right? Okay, so the thing is that, um, you know, we can, uh, look at what can the culture of the kingdom of God or what is the culture of the kingdom of God, which transcends all other cultures, right? What does it look like in the word of God? Um, so we see a lot of people interactions. We see a lot of, uh, you know, we see, especially in the book of Acts, we see, you know, ministry teams um, and uh, we see uh, ministry leaders in the book of Romans, the last chapter talks about, you know, who were all those people who Paul was interacting with and a long list of that and how he, you know, interacted with them and so on. So, um, you, you know, we can actually teach what the uh, kingdom culture is, right? And, uh, and more importantly, be the culture uh, or, you know, uh, be an example and be the culture, be the change, be the transformation that you want to see um, in the uh, ministry. And and over a period of time, you know, just uh, I, I know Pastor Ashish also, you know, uh, repeating this and reiterating this, you be the example. You be the example that you want to see in your team. You be the kind of thing that you, you know, the person that you want your team to be. You know, if you want if you want the team to be passionate and you know excellent and you know punctual and and so on, you know you be that person because we re reproduce after our own kind, right? So because we are trying to lead them, we are inspiring them. We reproduce after our own kind, uh, and it's um, it's it's a thing. You know some of these examples. Right? If you if you want uh, you know our, our organization to be gossip free, you know, it's sad that sometimes. You know, you could have Christian organizations, and it's it's great. They've done some great work in the past, and uh, it's a shadow of what they are, you know, what they were. And uh, and the thing is, the internal culture. You know, the culture was not healthy. It was it big. It would become, become toxic, right? And it pulled down and really unraveled the entire work of yesteryears. Right? It's a shadow of what it used to be. And there were other, probably other reasons, you know, refusing to innovate, refusing to um, move, uh, you know, uh, with what was happening and um, without compromising the truth, of course. Right? Um, so it's a shadow of the former self. Why? Um, well, one of the reasons, right, the culture, right? So if we want a gossip-free culture uh, among our staff, among the team, uh, then, you know, we need to, you know, refuse to gossip, talk ill about others, um, um, you know, pass on malicious information about others, refuse to pass such things, right? Um, if we want excellence in our teams, that we, then we need to pursue excellence ourselves. Um, if we want, so whatever quality, you know, in integrity, you know, because there will be opportunities where the team is observing you and I as leaders, and they're saying, okay, how will he or she respond in this situation? Now, this is a, 
here's a chance to compromise or here's an invitation to compromise on integrity here is a comp uh, invitation to or an opportunity to compromise on excellence now now what is how is this person going to respond right how is this person going to um behave or uh, you know what is the kind of decision this is my person is going to take now that is going to influence the team you might say okay for the moment okay let's do this guys let's just move on you know we'll see but then that's that's adding on to the culture you know of uh, of the organization right okay okay so we'll uh, we'll continue this next class and uh, yeah have a great weekend god bless you guys See you soon. Bye-bye.